got from the families are destroyed. Okay? Back that up a little bit. All right. Actually, forget this. Take this out. Just back it up a little bit more. Okay. Fa families are completely destroyed. Okay? Uh, it's a big prop. Here. You can go help Amir get the camera equipment from my trunk. Okay. okay. Families are completely destroyed. And what's happened? What's going on there? Nothing. There was no Wi-Fi. Okay. Families are completely... So wait, the issue of how do you build up society? People don't realize the purpose of Sharia is that this is the best way to keep society functioning for the longest period of time. That's the whole role of Sharia. That's its purpose. Okay. So, we're in a situation where, oh, oh Sh Shaban, I forgot something, because there's so much noise here. Uh, can you just plug this into the, into the phone? The purpose of Sharia, people don't realize, is that it's to keep society functioning. All the rules about riba, about the food we eat, about everything, okay? is all about keeping society functioning for the longest period of time. Now you got families destroyed. Okay, I fixed it. Yeah, there you go, that's better. All right. N not only families destroyed, okay, but not only families destroyed, the individual himself, they've, they've focused in, they've completely destroyed the family, which is the building block. Now, they've honed in on the actual individual cell himself by confusing him as to who he is even not messing him up there's a difference between you mess someone up and then confusing someone on who they actually are today you don't even know people today are encouraged to go into a huge crisis of who they are am i a male am i a female and going into this right they're completely uh pushed into this Right, and it's a it's an agenda to push people into this. It's a complete, and I mean, the whole nation is is divided and split and having an uproar on the dumbest subject of how to use a bathroom and who should use a bathroom. <laughs> well, lies. Look what we went through: slavery and being lynched and having uh, you know, complete inequality based on something that is clear, like the color of your skin. Like no one has. Everyone's born, you don't have any control over that, right? They were being lynched, killed. They didn't have the right to vote, right to have jobs, right to drink from the fountain. We went from that, then we went down to gay marriage. What is the fight for? Why can't you just have, do what you want? No, because we want to have the insurance, right? And we want to be called married. It's far, it's a big gap from that, from lynching to this, right? Now, where are we? Even you could say, okay, well, with the health insurance is a big deal, right? Now, to go to the bathroom. To have the right to go to the bathroom of my choice. This is the fight? That's what you're fighting over? And they're going to have to redo the whole... And then 99.99% .99 of the people of the country, okay, are going to have to... Yani, they're going to have to change because of 0.001% people want to choose i mean it's just mindless the whole thing is exactly what the problem called haraj and maraj complete chaos and and no order there's no order in life anymore right even uh, back they had christian order was better off right when they had order uh through some religion or other it was better off right but now it's complete chaos and and insanity so at this time the prophet sallam said whoever does hijrah at this time, whoever does hijrah at this time, it is as if he made hijrah to me. I'm sorry, whoever does ibadah at this time, it's as if he did hijrah to me. So the worship in the time of this insanity, okay, I believe people should lay low, right? They should lay low. Don't talk to the press, don't talk to the media. I wouldn't get involved in any of this stuff. It's insanity, right? It's complete insanity. It's a time to lay low, right? And the Prophet ﷺ said, in this time, stick to the Imam of the Muslims. Who is the leader of the Muslims? Stick to him, okay? They said, what if the Muslims don't have an Imam? He said, stick to the Jama'ah. 
He said, what if they don't have a jama'ah? They're all broken up. They said, stay home. This is the era I feel like it's like you go to school, masjid, your house, whatever else you do, right? But keep it. Yeah, and it's haraj and maraj. SubhanAllah. When mischief is rampant and society is plagued with evils, all right, the worship and obedience of Allah becomes very difficult. Okay. The reason being that in such a situation, evils are widespread and therefore everyone is easily inclined toward to them. Here's another thing. Some people are, you know, we got to go out and change, right? You can't change anything in this society. There's, you're like a small, uh, you can help other people. That's it, right? But you, at individual level, maybe community level, you cannot control the society. It's not, it's not going to time where you can come in and leverage any power and change society. And what, are the, what does our deen tell us about fitna? Our deen does not tell us, go and attack fitna. Our deen tells us, stay away from it. Our deen tells us, okay, avoid it. Okay, stay away from it. Don't, don't even try. It tells us, flee from it. Right? Fight or flight. Our deen tells us, flee from fitna. Okay? The Prophet ﷺ has a hadith that there is a man, the Jad will be announced. A man will say, I can go and handle him. So he'll go face off with the Jad. Okay? And then the Jad will trick him and he will end up being a believer in him and a kafir in Allah. Alright? So we have to take this attitude and people will talk about us and they'll say, Oh, you guys are like, uh, you're not engaging with the society. Sorry, if you have uh, Ebola, I'm not engaging with you, right? If, you, if you're someone with a communicable disease and you're bleeding all over the place, I'm not engaging with you, right? I'm putting up a big wall. That's what I'm doing. Anyone with common sense does that, right? And I'll help you from far. From far, I'll help you, right? But I'm not engaging with someone who has a communicable disease that I'm going to get. And if you imagine you had, uh, your a kid had poison ivy, very simple thing. Your kid's friend has poison ivy. Were well, you going to tell your kids, oh, go engage him, go help him, go give him a hug so he can get poison ivy too? Or no, put up a wall and then help him from far away, right? That's the attitude people should have towards fitna, not that we're going to go and change things, right? And this is qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal to element that the evil spreading in the world, this is one of the laws. Well, we're not shouldn't be surprised. If you're a Muslim, you're not going to be surprised. It's all in the hadiths of the signs of the end of time. The angel Jibreel alayhi salam came and he taught the prophet, he asked the prophet four questions. Very important. He came, angel Jibreel came in the form of a man. Okay. In front of all the Muslims. And he asked the prophet four simple questions. And this is the summary of the whole religion. Number one, what is Iman? The Prophet said is to believe in Allah, the angels, the holy books, the prophets, the day of judgment, and destiny. Then he asked him, what is Islam? He says Islam is to say that there is no God but Allah, to testify and that Muhammad is a messenger. To pray five times a day, to fast the month of Ramadan, to give zakah, and to make hajj once in a lifetime. Basics. What is Ihsan? Excellence in worship. He says to worship Allah as if you see him. And if he doesn't see, if you don't, if you don't see him, know that he sees you. So we need to worship properly with excellence. Then number four, he says, "Well, when is the day of judgment?" The Prophet ﷺ said, "The questioner, the one being questioned, knows no more than the one question." Right? In other words, that's not the critical question. So now Jibril tells. So we should not con start thinking of when is the day of judgment going to happen. But he did say something else he said well then tell me about its signs what are the signs of the coming of the day of judgment this is what's important and this subject matter the signs before the day of judgment is equivalent at the level of be beliefs and practices and which are we call aqidah fiqh and tasawuf why if you know and if you study the signs before the day of judgment your iman will increase Okay, your iman will increase, and if you uh, don't study the signs before the day of judgment, your iman will decrease. You will lose your iman. Right? Write this down. If you study the signs before the day of judgment, 
your Iman will increase. And if you don't study them, you can lose your Iman very quickly. Okay? You can lose your Iman very quickly. This is a very important subject. All right? Very important thing to cover. All right? And many people, if you look at them, their Iman is really, it's almost like lost. Okay? Their Iman is almost lost by not knowing the signs before the Day of Judgment. If they knew them, most of their fitna that they fall into, well, they will almost be immune from them. It's very important to know the signs of the Day of Judgment. One of them is that Islam will become a strange thing again. Islam began as a strange thing and it will end as a strange thing. Okay? This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Iman ends, began as a strange thing and will end as a strange thing. So that the Muslim going around, he's a stranger, he's not normal. He, people don't look at him as normal, right? They look at him as odd. The more odd that you're looked at, chances are the better you're doing your Islam. This is a sign of the day. Now when you tell a Muslim kid this, it solves a lot of his questions, a lot of his problems. So he knows we are meant to be, at this time, looked at differently. I mean, especially in America. Most, actually, most other countries, if you go to, is not as bad. You can go to South America, it's not as bad. You could go to Indonesia, it's like one of the safe havens, right? It's one of the safe havens, Indonesia, Malaysia. We have a group of friends of ours, they're making the hijrah. They're actually took, taking their families, and because they work with internet and online, right? They're actually moving to Indonesia and Malaysia. And they went on like a reconnaissance mission to see how things are going, right? They went on a reconnaissance mission to see what's going on over there, and they're actually moving to Indonesia and Malaysia. And they're going to build a little American like neighborhood there, right? Like there, because you have a cultural situation going on too. So they're going to build their, they're going to get involved and and do stuff, have a masjid and all that stuff, so that more Americans can come, right? More Americans can come because it's going to be a place where you need to make the hijra, right? So in the, you go to the Muslim world, you can't live anymore. Where are you going to go? Egypt, Pakistan. You can't live there. There's no livelihood there, right? It's not safe. My friend was from Nigeria. He thought himself going back. His family stopped him from going back. Like he was born in England. He's like, I want to go and live with my family in Nigeria. They said, no, it's, too, it's not safe. And there's no jobs, okay? There's no work. America's actually come catching on a catch up in terms of unemployment. So that's the nature of an economy based upon riba. The future, if you want to know what the future is in America, is that it, the poverty and the line between the rich and poor is growing. You should see in the New York Times they had an article on uh, they had an article on uh, that the catering of companies to the rich. The companies are now catering to the rich because they realize there's not money to be made on me and you, right? They're catering to the super ultra rich. One of them is an air, uh, one of the airlines. If you have a flight and you have a layover in Chicago, for example, and you got to catch from one flight to the next, right? They will take you directly from the plane in a Porsche from one plane to the next so that you don't have to mingle with the people. So that you don't have to go out and stand in line with us, right? They'll take you in a Porsche, okay, and just drive you to the next plane, and you just go to the next plane, so you don't have to deal with this. Say again. Say again. Oh yeah. Well, well the rich have their own airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. They they have their own airplanes. Or they charge or they yeah, they have their own. They have their own planes. They got everything. Okay, so this is the thing. We're now being uh, this gap is going to increase. More unemployment equals more depression, more crime, more all the dr drugs, all the musibas. What happened in the third world countries is going to happen here, right? A, in a different way, but it's going to happen here. It's guaranteed. We're getting into that. Yeah, we're, and also... In the Midwest, it's, uh, you can't believe when you see the 
pictures, you cannot tell whether it's in America or... No, yeah, you can't tell. You can't tell. So this is this, this hadith, you got to keep in mind this hadith because you'll feel that... Like, what is hijrah? What is the nature of hijrah? Okay. The nature of hijrah is that you're traveling, you're not comfortable, you're not at home. You're a foreigner. You're vulnerable. Right? Think of hijrah. Don't think of hijrah today where you're getting on like flight 95, right? No. From, from Newark Airport. No. You are... Think of hijrah in the time of the Prophet. You're carrying your stuff. You're going from one city to another in no man's land. You're in no man's land. Back in the day, travel was very dangerous. Okay? Cyrus, it was very dangerous. To the point that the Prophet prohibited a woman from traveling alone. A woman was prohibited from traveling alone, right? And I asked Sheikh Sadiq about this. He said, this hadith has to do with safety, right? If she needs to travel for a reason, like go to her grandma, go to her mother, right? She can do that. She can take a flight, right? But because it's safe today. Back in the day, Sheikh Sadiq said, it was unsafe. If she travels for one day, day and night, she's going to be accosted. Easy, okay? So you got to think of hijrah back then was very dangerous to travel. How many people in Hajj died? Robbers, road raiders, right? Very easy, okay? To be accosted, okay? All right, we got to, yeah. Uh huh. One's um, purpose and choice. Contrasting with, contrasting with people who, who don't have any choice, they stay where they are. Yeah. If you look at certain cities where people have moved, mm -hmm. they get here and it's like a trap. They go no place. Mm -hmm. So acting on choice, acting on purpose and choice, would you say that? Yes, that's a great point. So you're saying from the symbolism of Hijra is choice and abandonment of what's evil or throwing with the evil over your back. Hijra has so much symbolism that the, Pro that the Prophet is saying in this hadith, all of that is encapsulated and basically you are making the same decisions, putting yourself in the same discomforts and sacrifice and benefit just by worshiping properly in a time of craziness and hijrah that's a good point that's a great point now this brother saying hadith here oh it's cyrus cyrus what's happening man cyrus you guys know cyrus mcgoldrick who he is huh if you're gonna follow any of these these activists he's either like one of the only ones that's got his head on right cyrus mcgoldrick you don't know about him you don't know anything cyrus mcgoldrick from new york I think he's from New York. He moved, actually. He's somewhere else now. He's in Turkey or something. McGoldrick. Sheikh, question about the hadith about if there is no imam and no jama'ah, if the chain of imamate is broken, as it is, that's correct, there's no imam right now, uh, then what? Uh, is there a way for the institution to be revived? Or do we wait for the Mahdi? Might be a complicated answer, maybe very simple at your convenience okay very good question do we set up the khilafah or no the prophet ﷺ gave us the instruction if there is no khalifa what do you do go home do not try to set up the khilafah right if the situation opens it up right then there's nothing prohibiting but do not force it it's as if the prophet is telling us do not do it and why we believe that the imam mahdi will come out of vacuum. What's the proof of this? The Prophet ﷺ called the Imam Mahdi Khalifatullah, the Khalifa of Allah. What does the Khalifa mean? The successor, right? The successor is someone who comes, like you got President Bush, who was his successor, who came after him? President Obama, right? The next president is going to be Trump, right? Or I think it's going to be Trump, right? I think it's going to be Trump, right? Maybe Clinton, okay? Whoever, it, whoever it's going to be. Bernie, Thank you. If Bernie doesn't have the nomination, then yeah. Now, here's the thing with Bernie. Here, I don't mind Bernie Sanders, right? But what I'm thinking is we people looked at Obama as if he's the Messiah. 
he turned out to be a, a good president for Muslims, but he's actually bad for the foreign Muslims, right? He was good for American Muslims, but very bad for foreign Muslims, right? Like as if, so I'm surprised that people are still taking on this save, oh, Bernie's going to change, save the world. I, he's better than the others. I like the guy personally, but the president, the office itself is very limited. So I think it's just naive. But anyway, uh, the point is that the, the Khalifa successor. So the Prophet ﷺ called Imam Mahdi Khalifatullah, meaning that there is no Khalifa before him. So what is Abu Bakr? Khalifatu Rasulullah. What is Umar? Khalifa of Abu ba Khalifatu Khalifati Rasulullah. The, the successor of the successor of the Prophet. Then Sayyidina Uthman came, he said, we're not going to keep saying Khalifat, Khalifat, Khalifat Rasulullah. We're just going to, he said, said Amir al Mu'mini. Right? Amir al Mu'mini. Right? So that's a proof that when Imam Mahdi comes, he's going to come when there is no Imam. Yeah. Trump is close to be a devil more than anything else. This is what the brother said. Yes, and I would rather a devil with the face of a devil than a devil with the face of an angel. Right? Okay, good. Next question from Nafisa Tulhaq. So, would you say it is okay for a woman to travel without a mahram today? Would you still say it's safe? I would say if there is a reason. Like, my daughter's not going to go on a trip to the Caribbean without me when she's 17. She can go. She's not coming back. Right? Not as my bint. She can go and I'm taking the next flight and bringing her back because this is facade, right? My daughter's just going to go on a trip to Cancun by herself. It's not going to happen, right? I think it's facade, personally speaking. Even boys these days, you can't trust uh, this. I say, okay, I trust you, but I don't trust the world. This is my mom used to always say, right? I trust you, but I don't trust the world. What's going to happen to you? And when I went to England for my PhD, she said, you can go engaged and married. You can go, but married, right? You're not going to go and then get fitna. Have someone there to keep you, you know, away from fitna and, and grounded, right? Get grounded, right? So I got engaged, went, came back after three months, got married, and then went back. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is the nature of fitna. Today, boys and girls, I would say it's the same. It's not a men's world anymore. It's nobody's world. It's up in the air. Okay? And uh, the, the world of guys chasing girls is over. Girls chase guys too. And guys chase guys too. There was a guy who said, there is, the girls are chasing me. Right? I said, alhamdulillah, the guys aren't chasing you. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh... So the question now is what, is, what are the valid reasons, okay? What are the valid reasons? The valid, uh, whoops. What are valid reasons, Nafisa Tulhaq is asking. The valid reason, for example, to visit a relative, right? Maybe certain types of seeking knowledge, if it's in a safe group and a jama'ah. Maybe like Umrah with a jama'ah, Hajj and Umrah with a jama'ah. Things with a jama'ah, right, is important. These types of things are possibilities, okay? These types of things are all possibilities, right? And it's a case-by-case -case basis, you know? There should be family involved, there should be jama'ah involved, or there should be darura, absolute necessity, right? Some kind of necessity. I really don't believe uh, in just wandering around the earth today. The earth today is physically maybe safe, which that's going away too. The physical safety of the world is going away too. Because as we can see, nobody can stop people from doing acts of violence. And every act of violence that happens, a shooting, whatever, doesn't it happen in the most random place? Like a, a daycare? No one imagined it. In Connecticut. No one imagined that. Remember the Newton? Newtown? The last shooting in San Bernardino was in like a government building where a bunch of people are pushing paper, right? No one imagined that. A theater where Batman was showing, no one imagined that. So the world is not even physically safe, and definitely from, for us, for spiritual side of things, it's not spiritually safe. Too much fit in a temptation. I believe personally, a person, a Muslim, should try his utmost never to be alone. Be with your family, and be with your friends. Or a jama'ah, a jama'ah of the Muslims. There's a difference between friends and jama'ah. The jama'ah of the Muslims 
are the people who pray in mosques, right? These people, if you get a whole bunch of people, they all pray in the masjid, certain immorality will not come to them, right? They'll push it away. You had a question or comment? Yes, you can go if you're visiting relative. Like for example, if I had uh, a, a, a bint and she wants to go visit her grandma in another state, I wouldn't have a problem. She goes on a flight and visits her grandma. That's reason. That's fine. That's within reason, right? That's within. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, question here: Traveler's prayer. Yeah, you shorten your prayer. If you travel 48 miles or more, as soon as you leave your boundaries. You start shortening your prayer and combining them. Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Aisha. And according to the, Ma the, the, the Malikis, there's a limit on this of four days. Okay. If the trip is more than four days, you're not traveling anymore. But some differed. The Ahnaf are much more lenient. If you're traveling, you're traveling. Even if you're traveling for 40 days. Which makes sense because let's say you take a trip. Who takes a big trip? For four days if you take a trip to Italy for example right you're not gonna take a trip for four days you're taking a trip for a week right a 10-day trip then you travel a prayer the whole time yeah that's true yeah as long as you're traveling you shorten your prayers the Sharia I made things easy for us right so I make things easy Sheikh, are we allowed to pray behind a man with bad character? You're allowed to pray behind him. A man who has bad character. The prayer is valid. Okay? The prayer is valid. What is not allowed to pray behind is a man who has kufr and heresy in his belief. Namely, he doesn't believe in something clearly given to us in the Quran. Alright? He curses the Sahaba. He doesn't believe that they were good Muslims. Okay? Or he doesn't believe in hadith. These uh, clear matters of Iman, okay? Clear matters of Iman that he rejects. This person is a heretic, Ahlul Bid'ah, which we call Ahlul Bid'ah. What is the sign of Ahlul Bid'ah? They're very sneaky in their words and they try to slip subliminally their message into the, ma the Muslim masses. Well, and, and it's like uh, Shayateen, right? The Shay the Illuminati and all this like satanic stuff this sat or even just not even that like just sexual references right you always go on YouTube and you find like in all these child movies if you pause at a certain minute there's a sexual image there right all everything satanic and bad and evil the nature even people's nature even the evil people themselves they don't want to put it out there they put it in hidden Islam is the opposite Truth is the opposite. We give it to you as it is. If it's true, it's noble, be open about it. This is something I was taught early, right? The sign of Ahlul Bid'ah is they like to slip things in there, right? They like to slip things in there. We don't slip anything in there. It's all out there in the open. If you have a belief about something, it should be out there in the open, right? Okay. Uh, Uh, on the point of praying behind others, would it be okay to pray behind someone who wipes over the socks? We would pray behind someone who wipes over the sock because they do have a f position inside of Ahlul Sunnah Jama'ah, even though it's a very weak position to wipe over the socks. Don't wipe over your socks. Right? It's a very weak position that the, the Hadith says that the Prophet said and wiped over the Jorab, which is different from the Khuf. The Jorab is like a sock. However, it's a weak position. I wouldn't advise to do it, okay? Reason being, none of the four Imams acted upon it. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal accepted it. Why? Because they said, we never saw the Sahaba doing this, right? So it is in the, in the fiqh, but it's weak. But it is valid to pray behind someone. All right, last question was that. Uh, a, can you pray behind a Wahhabi? I don't want to make a generalization because they're different. If someone says, yes, God has a physical hand and whatnot, then don't pray behind him. If he, has a, if he says to that degree, yes, God has a physical hand and a physical face, then no. But 
not all of them say that they have contradictions. They say, yes, he has a face, but it's not like it's very confusing. I think they're oftentimes confused too, with no offense to them. Uh, if, you know, some kind, sometimes there's, uh, you know, some, some guys who have a position similar to that, but not exactly that. So I guess there's a spectrum. So I'm saying, what if your own family engaged in things that are prohibited? Let's say house on mortgage, but believe that it's okay due to some fatwa uh, or cultural differences where you can't distance yourself from them. Uh, you have you should just be good to your family in this respect you don't have to practice what they practice but don't cut them off for this reason the Quran gives us the ultimate ruling if your parents are telling you to worship another God do not obey them but be good with them in worldly matters like you can hang out with them right brother and sister is different right Allah is very sensitive about the mom and dad. Mom and dad. If the brother and sister is a bad influence, you stay away from them. But mom and dad in worldly matters. That's why you got to create a hobby or something, right? Where you and your mom or you and your dad get on, get along in some worldly matters, right? Some worldly matters so that you don't differ and disagree on religious matters. Okay. Any other questions from the live Jamaat? Shoot. So, like, when you pray with your mouth, okay, I have, like, children here, so it's rather for me just move the children to be behind, because yeah, so it's better just all the, because the children are still not adult, right? So when you're praying in Jama? Yeah, with the children, like, minding, uh, like, in, pr it makes a lot in your house? No, no, in, in the masjid. In the masjid, yeah. the children should be in the middle, between the men and the women. Okay. The, the children are the barrier between men and women, right? If you have you got the men our masjid here is like the sunnah right you got the men you got the women you got the barrier is the children that's the barrier right that's the barrier all right uh, what do you think about students loans a very big problem we need to fix that we need to try to get students loans right i can't say it's halal but i can't say i can't give you a solution that's a problem right i'm very unfortunate but there is a solution coming the solution is coming it's going to take time but they're going to consider the student like an investment and he's going to pay them back from his salary for like 20 30 years a little bit that he doesn't feel every year the solution's coming but it's not there and unfortunately i cannot tell you it's halal but i can't give you a solution either so in this type of situation all i can do is say use your heart right you know Allah right you know right and wrong and I pray that Allah has forgives all the students who are in this jam and took a loan I pray Allah Azza wa Jal forgives them but I can't tell them it's halal that's a big difference but I pray Allah forgives them and I will push the Muslims they need to fix the situation all right I'll take two last questions real quick can you behind a scholar who says God can lie but never will do so the deal bandy position um, Subhanallah, I, 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 the deal bandy, I wouldn't put him outside of Ahl Sunnah just for that. Okay, Sheikh Yusuf Al Qaradawi ruled mortgage is allowed if it is for the house that you live in and out of necessity. So, this is the fatwa. Fatwa takes something haram and says, in this circumstance, it's halal. Right? That's the nature of a fatwa. What is a fatwa? Something is haram. The Sheikh says, in this circumstance, it's halal. The fatwa can be right or wrong, right? But if the mufti is trying his best, he won't be punished. If he's truly, like he's not getting paid by the government to say that. He's not a corrupt mufti. He's a sound scholar. That's his fatwa. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? This matter of fatwa, how, should I follow it or not? The, this is where he, the Prophet told Wabisa, the Sahabi, follow your heart. In other words, follow, take the position. How do I assess, should I follow this or not? Right? You, you would just ask yourself. And we would say, all of the people who follow a mufti, okay, they will not be punished. No, they, we believe, inshallah, they will not be punished because they followed a scholar who was a, 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 you know, giving an effort. He's not a corrupt scholar, right? And secondly, the scholar himself, he may be right and he may be wrong, right? And I would say he's wrong in this case because there are halal means now. There's murabaha contracts everywhere. Kufar are doing murabaha contracts. 
which is non-interest contracts, right? So I would say he's not correct. But he's saying in a situation where there's absolutely nothing to do, you can use a mortgage. Yeah, there are certain circumstances. If you're, if you're out there living in like uh, Switzerland where there's no halal mortgage bank and you've got six kids, who's going to rent to you, right? So yeah, there are situations like that. You, no one's going to rent to you. No one's... Depends on the context. That's why it's very dangerous and not smart to take a fatwa and just throw it out there for everyone. No, that's not how it is. Fatwa should be case by case. Case by case. Okay? And if the mufti is wrong, he's rewarded. And those who follow him are innocent. And if the mufti is right, then both of them get the reward and are blessed. May Allah Azza wa preserve and protect all of the uh, imams. Who are trying to give benefit to the Muslims? Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you're bringing your kid. Anyone have kids? Six o'clock. The storyteller is coming. Yeah, bring the storyteller. Uh, bring your kids. <laughs>